What's up everybody? I hope you guys are doing well today. Sorry I haven't made a video in a, probably just over a week now. Um, I've just been getting pretty busy lately. Uh, for those of you that don't know, like I said, I work at a welding shop full time during the week. Monday through Friday, 7 to 3.30. Um, sometimes more. And I also attend a college technically full time. Um, for classes in business administration and then on top of that I run a side lawn care business so needless to say I get I tend to get pretty busy in the summertime especially when I have class going on um, as well as the lawn care business when the classes end it's not as bad but for a little bit it's pretty busy for me um, but as I said, I run a small lawn care business on the side, so I figured I'd give you guys an equipment tour of my lawn care business after having it open for, this will be my second year having it. So I'm going to go through my lawn care equipment in the order of which I acquired it. So for starters, the first thing I bought for the business was a Gravely Pro Stance 48 um, stand on zero turn lawnmower. It's a 48 inch deck. It is a commercial grade lawnmower. Um, I got a really good deal on it. I ended up getting it for about half the price of what it costs new with only 30 hours on it um, from a friend of my father's who was getting out of the lawn care industry. He knew I wanted to start it. Um, so he gave me a really good deal on it. I'm really thankful for that and the mower has been awesome for anyone who is looking for a smaller stand-on lawnmower i would highly recommend the gravely pro stance 48 it's got plenty of power it doesn't go through fuel like crazy um, it's super nimble it's amazing on hills it really does very very well on hills um, and it's really just a good all-around lawnmower so this is it right here um, nothing really very special like I said, I mean, you can see them. Just Google Gravely Pro Stance 48, and you can see plenty of pictures of it. Um, like I said, that was the first thing I acquired for the business. And after that, I needed to get a weed eater and a leaf blower. Um, so the weed eater I went with, or actually, I'm sorry, we'll go with the leaf blower first because I bought that first. Um, I bought a steel. Let me move some of the stuff off of here real quick. Um, the leaf blower that I went with was a steel BR200. You can see it right here. Um, the reason I went with this one is because at first I didn't want, or I'm sorry, the reason I went with the steel BR200 is because I wanted a backpack blower, um, but I didn't want to spend $800 on a leaf blower, and I also didn't want to lug around a big heavy backpack leaf blower all the time so this one is awesome guys it is a really small lightweight and compact backpack blower um it doesn't blow a ton of air of course but it's like i said it's really small um and it's super super light it runs great it does everything i need it to it's super fuel efficient i have to fill it up probably maybe once a month for as much as i use it um, maybe a little bit more than that, but like I said, it's a really, really good leaf blower. I would highly recommend it to anyone who is in the market for one. Um, I think I paid about $330 for that when I bought it, and that was brand new. Um, for like the lawnmowers and stuff, I didn't mind buying them used, but for the smaller engine things, like the weed eater and the leaf blower, I just wanted to get those new because I didn't want to have any issues with them, and I didn't like... The idea of cleaning the small carburetors i don't mind cleaning larger carburetors but the small ones i just don't know very much about them so i just wanted stuff that i could go out and start it every time and not have to worry about it too much so um yeah that's the leaf blower i use i'm looking into upgrading into a little bit bigger one like i said this one's awesome it does a great job but there are definitely a lot of times where i wish i just had a little bit bigger one so i haven't looked into it too far i'm not sure if steel maybe makes like a BR300 or a BR400. Um, I know they make a 600 and an 800, I think. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I want to go that far yet. Um, 
after the, I bought the leaf blower, I ended up having to buy a new weed eater. When I first started, I had my dad's old Echo SRM 225, I think it is. And that thing was a tank. It's older than I am. It's caught on fire before. It's been like completely filled with water. Um, not on purpose, by accident, of course, but that thing would just about always start until about halfway through last season. It kind of took a crap on me, and it's been giving me some finicky issues ever since. But after it, after it gave me one problem where it wouldn't start and the primer ball broke, um, I got it running and then the primer ball broke. But after those two issues happened, I told myself that it was time to just invest in a new weed eater because that one was, like I said, older than me and it was just time to upgrade. So the Echo one had treated me really well, so I ended up buying an Echo SRM 3020. This is the biggest professional grade weed eater that Echo makes. They have a 3020T, but it's the same size engine. It just has a two to one gear ratio in the head. And I actually wanted that one, but they said that the 3020 would have more than enough power for what I need it to do. And I really, really like this weed whacker. When I first bought it, I thought it was just a little heavy and I was wishing I would have gone with the 2620, which is their smaller professional grade weed eater. Um, I really wanted to get the 2620T after I had bought this one because it was a little bit lighter and it was supposed to have about the same amount of power as the 3020 does. Um, but after I've gotten used to it, I just want to go with the 3020T. Um, this one has tons of power for what I need it to do. It always starts. It goes through a little bit of fuel. Um, for example, I weed whacked, I weed eated the other day for about an hour and a half probably. Um, and it was just about all full throttle weed eating and it went through about one whole tank of fuel. So it does, like I said, it goes through a little bit of fuel, but that's what you have to expect when you have a weed whacker of this size but for what the size of it is, it's pretty lightweight. Like I said, I'm used to it now. When I first got it, it was a little heavy, but I'm not a very big guy. I'm only like 5'5 five, five or 5'6 five, and 130 pounds. I'm not anything huge. Or... So it was a little heavy for me at first, but now I'm used to it. I can use it all day and not feel very tired. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome weed whacker. It always starts. It's got tons of power. It does a great job. Um, the head on it, it has a speed feed head on it and I really really like the design of that head it's super easy to um, load it with string and I've never had any issues really where it doesn't want to put any string out um, so that's been awesome the weed whacker has been awesome I've actually been looking into getting the 3020T as another upgrade um, not that this one is in bad shape or anything it just looks a little old because a lot of my equipment tends to sit outside a lot because I don't have an enclosed trailer. I only have an open trailer and I don't unload it every time I'm done. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. Those three pieces of equipment are what I used all of last season. I used the Echo 3020 and I used the Steel BR200 and I used the Gravely Pro Stance 48. Um, and at the end of the season, I was completely broke even. My equipment had paid for all of itself, so I made out pretty good last season. Um, and I didn't have any complaints at all, really. The only thing I kind of wished at the end of the last season was that I wish I had a little bit bigger mower for some of my yards, but I didn't want to get rid of the 48 inch lawn mower. Sorry guys, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I had a friend of mine call me, but I think where I was at was I had made it all the way through last season successfully with these three pieces of equipment and the only thing I was wishing was that I had a little bit bigger mower for some of my larger lawns. However, I didn't want to get rid of my 48 inch Gravely because it was a really, really nice machine. Um, it did everything I wanted it to do. It could do the larger lawns, it just took a little longer than I wanted it to. Um, and. I honestly, like, if I had a bigger mower, I couldn't use that in some of my smaller properties that I cut. So I needed to keep the 48-inch Gravely and get a bigger one. So 
at the beginning of this season I started looking for a decent deal on a 60 inch cut long zero turn um, I wanted a commercial grade when I didn't want any homeowner grade and I was trying to find a machine that had under a thousand hours on it for a decent deal I didn't mind paying a little bit for a really nice machine I just didn't I couldn't afford spending fourteen thousand dollars on a newer 60 inch commercial zero turn um, so I started scouring Facebook and I ended up coming across this mower. I think this is a I, this is an 06 or an 07 Kubota ZD28. It's got the three cylinder 28 horsepower diesel engine on it. Um, it has the fabricated deck. Um, let's see what else. It has 730 hours on it. Um, and it was a one owner machine. It was owned by a farm. Um, when I had bought it, it had a brand new radiator in it, uh, and a couple other parts were placed on it, but so far, guys, I really, really like this machine. Um, it has a ton of power, which is awesome. Like, it, in, I've used bigger commercial gas-powered lawnmowers, like, bigger 60-inch commercial lawnmowers powered by gas engines, and when you get into the thick, tall grass, all of them seem to have bogged down at least a little bit. Whereas this Kubota with the diesel on it doesn't bog down at all. And I know people have said that in the past, like, oh, you can't even feel it. But like with this mower, guys, I really can't even tell that I'm going through thick grass, thin grass, whatever. It doesn't matter. It just cuts like a champ. It cuts really, really nice. Um, when I got it, I sharpened the blades on it. When I got it, I immediately sharpened the blades on it. I greased the whole thing with my dad. Um, so it should be ready to rip for this season. Um, let's see. The, everything about this mower is made pretty heavy duty. I mean, the belt on it is some sort of like double looking belt. If you look in there, um, you can see it doesn't just have one rib. It has one here, a groove in the middle, and then it has another rib. Um, you can see it here like those aren't two belts. It, that's one whole belt. It just looks kind of like two um, It has a drive shaft coming out of the front of the engine that goes to a gearbox to power the deck um, And it also has the hydraulic deck lift um, So I haven't owned this machine very long it seems to be in good shape It doesn't hardly have any leaks anywhere the drive seem to be in okay condition um, with 730 hours on it, it should have a long life left in it. But like I said, this thing is awesome. It cuts like a champ. It cuts really, really nicely. My dad had a had a grasshopper. Um, I think it was a 721 grasshopper, and it had the three-cylinder Kubota gas engine in it with the 60-inch deck. And this thing outcuts that one by a lot. And the best thing about this machine so far is how much power it has and how little fuel it goes through. Um, for example, guys, the Gravely over here, I fill it up about every two weeks or every week and a half. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't burn a lot of fuel for what it is. It's nice. I really like it. And the Kubota, with the, two foot, with the deck being two foot larger than the Gravely, goes through the same amount of fuel as the Gravely. Um, whereas like the larger gas commercial mowers go through a ton of gas they really drink it down especially when you're in heavier thicker grass so that has got to be my favorite part is how much power it has and how little fuel it uses for what it is um, so, um, now guys I will say this isn't my full-time job the lawn care thing is not my full-time job it's just a side business I have like I said, full time, I work at a welding shop. This is just something I do in the evenings and on the weekends to try to make a little extra money. Um, so I don't have like a full time review of these machines. I mean, I've used the Gravely all season last year, but it wasn't as heavily used as per se it would be if it was on like someone's trailer that uses them every single day, all day long. Um, but that's my review or but anyways guys i think that's going to about do it for this video if you guys liked it um please hit the like button if you want to see more 
or if you want to see more about this little side business I have going on, comment down below what you want to see. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, have a good night. See ya.